hopefully this is zoomed in enough so you'll be able to see my spreads pretty decently. But I wanted to do an in-depth how I plan in the passport along with the overall setup and I asked some questions over on Instagram so I'm going to try and collect all of this into one like massive video on my passport size. So this is my passport size traveler's company traveler's notebook which I use as a bullet journal. This houses all of my personal tasks, goals, information, pretty much everything I need to do with planning ends up in this particular notebook. With the exception of work, I keep a separate work planner. There are some work events that make them make their way into this planner. For example, if I have a huge deadline and that's going to impact my personal life, I make sure I mark that in here so I can see that it's coming up, work travel, um, big things like that will kind of make it way, make their way into this planner, but work to do's typically I don't do in here, which is something that is a little bit different than how I've planned over the last couple of years. I'm really trying to pull work out of my personal planner as much as possible for mental health reasons. Uh, the other thing that doesn't end up in here is my journaling. I do have a standard size traveler's notebook, which I use as a memory keeper and a journal. I also have a different passport cover that holds a couple other journal inserts. If you're curious about my journaling lineup, I can link my quarter three video where I talk about what I'm kind of currently using for the quarter up in the cards so you can check that out. Uh, so this is a brown cover from Traveler's Company. I picked mine up from Goulet Pens. I really like the color. This is my first time uh, getting a brown and I think I was sleeping on it to, I guess, be relevant. I really like the leather. I think I was scared of it being too smooth or too stiff, but mine's still very soft, very flexible, um, but it is a very smooth piece. But I think all Traveler's notebooks um, kind of tend towards that smooth versus the camel. The camel is like a fuzzy suede type of texture. My elastic is red. It came from my black passport cover and my charm is from Bomb Kuhan. I can link their shop down below. I really like this charm because I don't have to worry about how it lays. It looks beautiful in both directions. It's just a little bit less fussy than some of the other charms and I, it doesn't clink so much. So one of my favorites for that particular reason. This is also my wallet and my planner setup. So let's talk about kind of my wallet inserts here quick before we get into my bullet journal setup. I have um, two book insert system with a wallet wrapped around each of them. The first one is wrapped around with this Traveler's Company for Roof collab in the olive cover. I got mine off of Etsy, but I believe I've seen them in some Traveler's Company USA partner shops. So um, look around online to see if you can kind of find one. I really like it. Um, it's like pretty color canvas works out really well for me. This is really my main wallet, so I keep my most used card and ID in here. In the back, I have um, a deco tag and then a receipt, typically, things that I need to kind of check on our finances for. And then there's a zipper pocket in the back, which I keep our health insurance cards, things I need on me, but don't need to reach for frequently. The second insert is wrapped around with this clear card insert. This one is from Traveler's Company. I got mine from Jet Pens, I believe. And uh, it's got two credit card size slots in the front. I've just got some sticky notes. Those are from Daiso um, Deco Bit. I believe that came from a Midori notebook that I like. In the back, there is a full size slip pocket and that's just like our Vax cards. And then I write myself like username hints um, on the inside of this paper. This is from like a Deco little book that my friend Amanda sent me. Uh, a lot of the collaging elements were gifted to me by my friend Amanda off of Instagram. So I don't know where everything is from. I'm still trying to kind of thread all of that through. I just wanted to get my toes wet, but I just fell in love with this like wheat and needed it in my planner. So there it is. I've got some stickers on here that I just keep with some washi tape. This washi tape is from Muji. Uh, stickers are from randy.plans and I use them for a habit tracker that you'll see here in the flip through. And the second part of this insert has a zipper case. Uh, I don't currently keep anything in there, but I like this in case I need to keep something like water protected. My planner doesn't usually get wet, but 
you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I also keep my rating board in the back. This is from the 20, from the year 2020. I got it off of Etsy, I think in 2021. I've had this for a while. I just fell in love with the pattern. So um, not sure if you can still get it, but you might, I recommend checking Etsy or eBay maybe uh, if you're looking for it. Okay, so that is my wallet portion. I really like having my planner and wallet in one piece because I am the kind of person who takes their planner with them everywhere. This goes to the grocery store with me. This goes to the gym with me. Um, anytime I'm out and about, just because I prefer to write things down as I think of them, it just works a little bit better for my brain if I can kind of unload tasks onto paper and then I can kind of free up that for whatever else they need to, to be doing. So uh, this does go with me everywhere to preface that. Okay, so let's talk about my inserts here. I have a two book system. Both of my inserts are from Good Ink Pressions. Their shop is based out of Spain. So if you're USA based, it will take some time for the inserts to get to you, but I believe they're well worth the wait. I have um, 68 GSM Tomoe River Paper insert, and I go with a four millimeter grid size and I request the square corners. The grid size and the corners are custom requests. So when I check out, I leave a note to seller asking for four millimeter grid and square corners. I've ordered from Good Impressions three times and they've been able to accommodate all three times. So that's really great. And I will be reordering from them again, I'm sure. Uh, I really like the 68 GSM Tomo River Paper too. I feel like things absorb a little bit better. They're not as blendable as the 52 GSM that you see in like a Hobonichi paper, but I feel like I, I use more of my fountain pen colors in here. They'll still smear a bit, but not as bad as they would in like my Hobonichi week. So that's been a lot of fun just getting more use out of my fountain pens by using um, different paper. This is what I refer to as my annual book and it has 80 pages um, front and back and my second insert is exactly the same except it is a 120 page insert so it's a little bit bigger. I have this set up as a bullet journal and the way I break up the information between the two books is my annual book stays in my planner all year round and it houses any sort of long-term information, habit tracker, collections that I want to see at, you know, throughout an entire year or beyond my current quarter. My quarterly book is basically daily logs, weekly logs, and any short-term lists that I'm not going to need to see throughout the entire year. My annual book stays in my planner all year, and this is actually my third uh, quarterly book so I have a lot more flexibility to use up as many pages as I need. This is a huge pro for me coming from the Hobonichi weeks because I was always terrified of running out of pages and this is a system that allows me to use exactly what I need. I have my information I need with me all year at all times and then I can be really flexible and don't hold myself back as much on using pages in my daily logs, etc., to kind of get things done for sketch, doodle, memory keep, whatever I want to use the pages for. My annual book holds anything that I need to see long term. So this is my future log, my monthly spreads, habit trackers, collections, logs, anything where I'm trying to get a year's worth of data in there typically ends up in this insert. This is where all my information kind of starts. Uh, so something gets scheduled, I'm flipping here, um, I'm trying to research for a trip, typically starts here with that kind of information. Um, so I have a few pages that I've left. I'm just kind of using them to hold sticky notes right now, but I plan on doing a master index in here. I haven't quite done that yet, so I'm not going to talk about that too long, but I do keep all my inserts or I have thus far this year, and I'll talk about how I'm archiving them very briefly at the end of the video, but I plan on doing a master index. And once I get that set up, I'll do another video talking through that. From there, we move into my monthly spreads. I do a month on two page spread. My squares are five by five. I draw in all my calendars with pencil and this is where I do all my pre-planning and it's also my current monthly log when I get there. I think that is a no brainer for a lot of people to just use your monthly as your future log, but that is something I had to learn the hard way. It's very efficient for me to do this. 
and I have all 12 months at the time in here at a time in here and I just put down things as they get scheduled real time over here I use this as a running to-do list this list is curated from my goals workbook which I use the power sheets um, cultivate what matters workbook for 2022 or anything I'm like okay hey I need to do that next month I will write in tasks ahead of time so this is August um, September, etc. So anytime something is scheduled, I write it in real time. If it gets canceled, I strike through it. I don't have enough appointments where this becomes a problem. So for now, this is continuing to work for me. I don't keep track of any of this digitally. Uh, my brain does not work that way. It works on paper. So <laughs> this is what I do. Um, after December, I've got a future plus page. So this is where I write down anything that gets scheduled beyond the end of the year. So I have one place to reference it when I set up my next planner. Um, I do use these tabs. These are Midori index clips. I have the mix of an orange and the silver. I get mine from jet pens and they are repositionable, reusable, and they will slightly damage your pages depending on how rough you are with your planner, but I really like them. First tab takes me to my habit trackers. I'm tracking two main things this year. I've got my cycle over here and I just use a different symbol to mark when I'm on my period, when I'm ovulating, uh, things like that. And then I have my workout tracker and I just track what workout I do first letter of it. So P is for Peloton, W is for walk, L is for lifting. Both of these trackers are the Peanuts Planner Co. 104 Undated Yearly Bundle in the pocket size that I've printed on sticker paper. I use the online labels waterproof matte sticker paper if you are curious. And I just print that out um, from them and pasted them in. From there, I have my adulting log. This is sort of like an Alistair method of when things need to get done along with a when did I last combination spread. So I've got the first letter of each month out of the year. And then up here is monthly cleaning tasks. These are more quarterly tasks. And at the bottom are just some things that I've kind of added. And I write down the date when I do the task. If there's a dot, I have yet to do that. And this helps me keep on top of my cleaning and things like that. Uh, over here is just a brief finance spread. I do all my finances digitally. I use YNAB, you need a budget if you are curious, but basically at the end of each month, I write down income saved, invested, our expenses, and then the sum of those expenses because we have some goals related to that. Next, I have a reading log and I keep a paper reading log versus Goodreads just for my fan fiction. I read a lot of fan fiction. I have not logged the last few recently, so I need to do that. But basically book number, if it's a physical book, site, if it's fan fiction, title and author, and then a rating. And if something doesn't have the rating, it means I haven't finished it yet. Gift ideas spread again, another Alistair. I've got family members dot under if the idea applies to them, list of what the ideas are as they come up and then I cross them off and strike through once that gift has been used. Um, so I know it's no longer an option. This is my date night log. So my husband and I try and go on a date once a week. So I write down the date and a brief summary about what we did just to kind of see them all together. Running shopping list is next. I split the page into half and then these are just things that I need to pick up that I don't get from our grocery store because we don't go to other stores more than like once a month. Next is my debit spread and this is essentially a check register. I've got the date, a description, the amount that I need to, to move around and then between which accounts. Um, this just helps me see when things get charged to the wrong account. I write it down so when we get a payday I can move money accordingly. This is my spending log meets package tracker. This is set up very similarly to a check register. I've got date description, money in or money out, my balance of my fund money, shipped and then received. And this helps me not duplicate my writing so much. So if I, for example, here, July, I had money in, there's no shipment associated with that. So I just do two dashes over here. I have a company sending me something, so there's no money associated with it, but then I have a ship date and then I will do the receipt date. Um, here are a couple spreads I used to plan my trip to Iceland. So I just had a master to-do list and a master packing list. Um, quick calendar overview of what we did. I do have a video talking about the stationery that I took with me to Iceland, so I can link that up above if you want to check it out. Next, I have a running log, just keeping track of the stuff that my Apple Watch does on paper. These are cursed. The minute I set them up, I stop running. So 
um, and then also a quick measurements log, just um, different body parts that I measure. Again, I don't do that very often, so I don't know why I always set them up. Next is my spread that I've been using to plan my Animal Crossing Island, and this is just sort of drawing out the concept of what areas I wanted to do there and if there's like any particular items that I wanted. And now it is essentially just like a sticky note hub of looking up information, like how many spaces Nook's Cranny takes up and things like that, um, and then drawing out specific areas. I could do a video talking about this. I had a suggestion to do like how you plan for video games. Um, been really into Animal Crossing recently. I hope to do like a Dream Address release for those of you that are curious what my island looks like when this is done. But um, yeah, I'm a paper planner to visualize what I'm gonna do and then I go ahead and set it up. And then I have a log for Stardew Valley. I started a brand new Stardew Valley expanded save on PC. So I haven't played since June 26, but I just write down what I am doing and what I need to do next to help me jump back into games because I play very sporadically. This is a spread where I'm trying to do some content planning. I've got the fiscal week numbers here. Um, at the week number, I do what YouTube video I'm planning on releasing and then just some ideas for some reels or like TikToks because those typically are more involved than just taking photos on my planner. And I write those in in pencil um, just so I can move ideas around or as I hear things on Instagram. Pencil planning for a potential trip to Mexico this year. A uh, bucket list is places we wanna check out in our area um, for date nights and things like that. In the back, I have started planning for 2023. I've just got some ideas, a wish list, things I think I wanna buy, um, sticky notes. Um, yeah, I'm already thinking about 2023 and we'll, we'll leave it at that. In the back, I've got a pen test page here if you are curious what I have currently inked. And then I have a sticker pocket here. This came from the 2022 like dated sticker bundle from Traveler's Company. And then I've got a um, piece of art that I like that I printed on cardstock. This, I can, I can list her handle down below, but she sells uh, digitals through her Instagram. Okay, so second insert or my second book is my current bullet journal. So this is where my daily logs happen, my weekly dashboards or any sort of short term list. I did recently move into this one, I think the last couple weeks of June and I'm loving it so far. So in the front cover, I have a insert. This is from Perpetual Plans. I think that's wrong. I'll list it down below. This is like a no spend tracker for pocket rings that I've trimmed down quite a bit and I'm using this as a no spend tracker. And I've got that washi taped in here. I'm using again, those stickers from Randy to, to mark them off just because I have so many dot stickers and this is a fun way to use them. Did a quick collage piece. Um, all this was gifted to me from my friend Amanda. I will try and do some like um, sleuthing to figure out which shops most of these are from, but I know that this is like some handmade paper. And I really, I'm really into the, the paper ephemera and the washi tapes. Um, first couple pages are really just like sticky notes. This is where I write down or I brainstorm things to kind of figure it out before I kind of commit to putting it in my planner. Sometimes I do that directly on the paper in my planner too. It just depends, but I've been really doing sticky notes. This is, I did like a Q and A, um, leave me a question on Instagram for this particular video. So this was just a reminder of things that I kind of want to talk about. Um, and then we move into my weeklies. All of my weekly logs so far in this book have been this layout and I found this in my quarter two book and I absolutely love it. Basically I do a horizontal, we get a glance Monday start. This is where I put down date specific events or appointments, couple stickers here and there. I do a habit tracker and then running list and the right hand page just sort of varies. I can either break these down into more task specific lists, notes from the week. I had COVID this week, unfortunately, so I was just keeping track of my symptoms because I thought I might want to, you know, check that out later. Both these stickers are from the Coffee Monsters Co. Uh, this week I had a couple wonky dreams, so I wrote them down, some information on some flight research, and I did a, another little collage, again, using some pet tapes or PET tapes. These are pretty glossy, but I like how it turned out. 
And again, just like a hybrid of main events and tasks that I need to pre-plan. I use my weekly dashboards to pre-plan essentially. And then I just reference these when I fill out my daily to-do list. I don't spend a lot of time in my weeklies. They're just more of a landing page for pre-planning tasks or information I wanna hold from the week. It's, it's how I'm approaching that, which is a little bit different than how I approach it in my weeks. My weeks also had the third element of needing to be a memory keeper. And now at this point, I put more emphasis in memory keeping on my dailies or in my separate memory keeping journal, which is my standard size. Uh, this is from the Coffee Monsters Co. That is from Happy Daya, I believe. In June, I was doing one full day per page. I stamp in my dailies. Um, this is my stamp. I get it from Amazon. I can link that down below if you're curious. And I use Versamagic Chalk Ink in the black. And um, basically, it's just doing a page per day, writing out my tasks. Again, all of these are personal tasks. If you're curious about my key, I know I've got a video from earlier in the year kind of talking about that. I can link that up above. And uh, just kind of doodling. Um, this is when I had COVID, so I was doodling about Animal Crossing. I, I've been obsessing about Animal Crossing. I think you're going to see Animal Crossing and just about every other spread uh, here moving forward. But having a full day per page was really nice. It gave me a lot of room to feel like I could just do more, draw more, collect more, doodle more, play with my fountain pens, things like that. And I like this. I'm probably going to go back to this at some point. But for the month of July, I was feeling like it was a lot of pressure to have to fill up a day per page. And so I shifted things a little bit when I got to July and I moved down to doing it more Hobonichi week style, which you'll see here in a bit. Um, this is my first weekly for July, um, pulled out some Tombos to highlight some of those bigger events, planning some podcast stuff with one of my friends, so notes from that call there. Um, this is my current weekly, I've got some sticky notes just to keep track of stuff that I need that I probably don't need to keep that information long term on. Um, next week I pre-plan in here so you can kind of see the events, tasks. Um, wrote on my sticky note what I want to eat. Um, I do use some blotting paper. I get my blotting paper from Jet Pens. I can link it down below. I just cut it down to passport size. And then um, here are my daily logs. So again, I'm kind of reverting to how I did this in my Hobonichi weeks. And so far, this has been more of my preference. I will the night before just write the date, the day of the week. I check my weekly spread to see if I have any date specific tasks or events. And I will pull those things along with stuff from my weekly running to-do list, anything I think I wanna tackle, write it out, brain dump stuff as it happens throughout the day. And on the right, I just either doodle something, put down a sticker or keep track of highlights of my day. So this is the first day of July. Um, the second day we tried a new um, restaurant and I rated it. My husband got a bottle of Eagle Ray, which is a bourbon. We went on a hike and I just drew some of the leaves that we saw, some thoughts on doing some videos for One Book July, which would be like a short term list, which is why it's in here versus my annual. Independence Day, the stickers from the Coffee Monsters Co. Um, talking about how much I love this cover. Uh, this day I redid the area that my museum is in Animal Crossing. We had a fire alarm go off at three in the morning. Um, redid my entrance. We tried Jinya. Um, this was my first time trying some transfer stickers. I got them from Journal Station, um, which was a new to me shop. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, this sticker is from Randy.Plans. Uh, last weekend we went and saw Thor, Love and Thunder. I used one of the PET tapes that Amanda sent me just to do that. This sticker is from Caffeine and Paper Co. Taped in part of our receipt and just like a brief summary. If you haven't seen it, it's funny and I think that's what they're trying to do. So I guess they hit the mark in that point. Uh, new Fountain Pen Day, uh, Medium Fine. Again, another pro gear. I have a problem. <laughs> Um, all of my writing, by the way, is done with my Pilot Vanishing Point, so any of the black you see is with this guy here. This is an extra fine. It is inked with Dia Tremendous Archive ink. It's my go-to ink. It dries very quickly. I can highlight it with a Tombow. It dries in less than 30 seconds. I will use a my like one piece of blotting paper just out of habit, but the 68 GSM paper, I feel like it dries even faster. So, But this is my go-to pen. I will have that listed down below. Um, need to update my LinkedIn, sticky note on some ideas for potential cover I might try and get, um, ideas for a, a video, 
that I want to do this month. So I just popped it in here. Um, inquired on a tattoo. Um, finally unlocked the llamas and like went to Harb's item <laughs> island so I can actually change my items in Animal Crossing. Um, all the bold lettering is done with my Tomba Funonosuke brush tip pen. It's my favorite. It's in the hard tip. At this point, I'm just so used to it and I love using it for sketching. So most of my doodles, I will do the line art with that. And then I fill them in with either Tombow or fountain pen ink. So literally every single doodle in here is done with that brush pen. So for those wondering, um, last night my husband got groceries, which was a huge blessing. This sticker is from Happy Dan. He got me some flowers, so I briefly doodled those in. And then here is my to-do list for today. I am really like just kind of using up pages as I need it. Sometimes it's a full page per day. Usually it's about two days per page and I feel less pressured to draw something elaborate, but I know I can take a full day per page if I need to. So that's one of the things I'm really liking about this system is I feel like I have been more creative in the traveler's notebooks. I'm more willing to experiment. I'm getting to bullet journal again, which is sort of like my true planning love, but in the passport size, it's so much less overwhelming because the spreads are so much smaller. I feel like they're really quick for me to set up. I'm settling into a weekly spread and it's been a good balance of just um, getting to bullet journal again, but not feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to create something incredibly elaborate to be relevant online when it comes to bullet journaling. So I'm just really dialed back, back to basics. I like that I get a fresh insert every few months. It has like that built-in refresh. My planner feels like a new planner. I'm not getting as bored as easily. And I have a passion for tiny bite-sized planning. So this really, you know, it's just that, yes, I could go smaller, but this is as small as I wanna be reasonably. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in it, new covers. I can switch my wallet inserts out. I can use a different type of insert, a fresh book with a fresh collage. Uh, you know, new layouts and things like that. So there's a lot of change built into the system while still staying consistent. And I feel like there are a lot of options, but it is a little bit more limited than I was in ring planning. Ring planning was like Pandora's box for me because it was like new dividers, new printables, backdating inserts. And I just sunk so much time and money into that. <laughs> I can still sink a lot of money into this if I try hard enough, but I really like the Traveler's Company covers. They are a little bit pricier, but um, they're not as expensive as some of the other covers that I've kind of lusted after in the past. So it's been a good compromise of a lot of flexibility, a lot of creativity, but there's still sort of like that within an insert restrictiveness. Um, but I'm bullet journaling in them. So it's just been a good compromise for me. Uh, I have my Traveler's Company um, clip over here. Really recommend this. These inserts lay relatively flat. I'll kind of give them a good, you know, lean back and they will more or less lay flat, but I will just kind of weigh down the corner so things stay um, pretty even when I'm writing in them. So this kind of stays in my planner all the time. I really like that. So this is the craft binder from Traveler's Company. I got mine off of Jet Pens. I believe it's around 13 USD is what they are selling it for. Popped a sticker on here from my 2022 monthly in the passport size. But basically what this is, is it's a notebook that has these like metal bars and they can pop in and out. You put your insert in there. And I think that this is gonna be just a really functional way of archiving my planner. I have my very first insert where I was just kind of experimenting in March and getting used to the system. And then I have my quarter two book in here, which is fun because this is the insert I took with me to Iceland. I hopped over a little bit early because I was just looking for something fresh, but my next insert, I'm going to try and make sure I use up you know, every single page before I hop over. And the way I'll archive this at the end of the year, I'm thinking I'll have my annual book up front and then all my other books behind. And if I run out of room, I'm just gonna use a jump band if I need more than the five that it allows, because I think I will. So my annual book, my quarter three, my quarter four. So maybe it'll be perfect and that's exactly what I need. 
I think it's gonna be a little bit stuffed, so I might have to rubber band it to keep it closed, but really like this option. And because this can sit on my shelf like this, it just feels a lot more contained. And I know I'm actually gonna be able to flip through the inserts and find information if I need them. So I'll probably do a separate video on archiving towards the end of the year, just to see what it looks like when it's done, how it's working, if I'm referencing it and it's been functional, I'll let you know. Um, but right now having an annual book has been really good. I find I really don't need to see my daily logs again other than just to reminisce, so that has been that but hopefully this answered the bulk of the questions that i've been getting on this and you guys could see my spreads and it makes sense this is essentially a bullet journal that's split across two different inserts and i have been loving it so if you're in a passport size let me know so i can go stalk your channel or your instagram i'm always looking for um, passport inspiration. If you are feeling like you're ready to hop into something new for the second half of the year, let me know what you are using. But if you've made it this long, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.